This is Sisters, History Detectorist. I'm the baby. Oh, uh, and yeah, I'm the old one. <laughs> Couldn't tell, huh? Well, we have a story to tell that took a lot of research, and that's one of the things that we do. If you go to our website, it's not just about metal detecting the cellar hole, it's about finding the history of the person doing the genealogy. And this one is about finding Fessenden. We found a Civil War soldier that never had gotten his recognition and after 108 years, he finally has got his headstone. So you want to talk a little bit about it? Well, we, in our long research, we were researching uh, a property that was a, across the road from us. And in researching that one, we found that they had had a young child that had been adopted. Well, it comes about that in our research that we found at the library that this Fessenden had given this child for adoption to this family across the road. And and then we started trying to find out what happened to Fessenden along the way. And it appears that Fessenden had kind of got lost along the way after the after he was in the um, Civil War and lived with um, some of his family, lived with his son. And then he just, just kind of disappeared. And that's where the looking for where he was buried kind of. Yeah. took place. And actually, they had had his GAI marker for 50 years on the wrong spot. And we found the records for him, and we went to the town office, and they didn't know where he was. And we went, found that um, the town agreement had paid for his burial expenses. And so we went and looked there to see if he was buried there. But we finally did find the spot where he was supposed to be. And then the Daughters of the Union Veterans, they applied for the stone mm -hmm. through the state of Maine and he just got his stone and they did a really nice ceremony and that will be following this talk. Well and now he's buried right, right there beside his wife and a couple of his smaller children and they did have a very nice ceremony. Yeah. <laughs> enlisted in the 10th Regiment, Company G, of the Maine Volunteers. Most of his service was spent guarding the railroads up and down the east part of the country. He was discharged for disability on March 4, 1863, after serving 17 months. He lived in this general area after his discharge and passed away on February 9, 1908. Because he had no money at the time of his death, he was buried in this swan lot with his first wife and two young children. We'd like to thank Heidi Inman, history detectives, 
for helping us locate his final resting place. Her research enabled us to obtain a military stone for him and honor his service today. Many thanks also go to Telstar High School freshmen Victoria Crockett and Richard Carey for their help in setting the stone. Thank you all for being here today. And now Larry Barney uh, will have a part of a son's service. The march of this soldier is over. Let us remember Private Swan here at rest under the blue skies of heaven, guarded by the silent stars that in life watched over him Viviacs on the battlefield or lay down weary and footsore on the soil of the Southland. May we, may we, as we stand here by his grave, remember that it is our duty to honor the memory of all men who stood soldier to soldier on the bloody fields of battle, who guarded so faithfully, so honestly, and so well the sacred bonds of statehood, and who fought for, the, for liberty and the dear old flag. They have all passed away on their final review, and upon us is devolved by sacred right of heritage duty of, of perpetuating the principles for which they fought. With solemn tread and with heads bowed and voices hushed, we, daughters of Union veterans of the Civil War, 1861 to 1865, need to remind our people again of their duty to the soldiers who wore the blue, to the flag for which they fought, to the country for which they died, and that is ours to keep alive the memories of their heroic services and unselfish sacrifices. Sisters and friends, these Union veterans of the Civil War were pledged to exercise the greatest of Christian virtues, charity. Let us, like them, strive to exercise that virtue to all men. May their virtues be to us a guiding star, causing each to strive to nobler acts of kindness and charity, that we may eventually reap the rich reward promised to those who are true. Be thou faithful unto death, and give thee a crown of life. We have come not only mindful of our obligations as da of daughters of Union veterans of the Civil War, but in response to the dictates of our hearts. May we have come to give the loyal men who followed the flag from the shadow of Sumter to the sunlight of Appomattox a manifestation of our appreciation and an assurance that we shall ever hold in grateful remembrance their loyal hearts and shall ever pay honor to them. As sinks the setting sun to rise again another morn, so fell asleep his comrade to rise in the land of endless day. He offered his life, his fortunes, and his honor for the preservation of the country, and in its hour of greatest need, so we pledge ourselves anew to honor the flag our father saved. May our spirits here be imbued with a spirit of loyalty. Let us pray. God of battles and of peace, ruler of the destinies of countries and of men, we ask thy blessing upon the defenders of our country's honor. Bless and preserve in purity and integrity our country, for which this soldier, our father, fought. Bless the members of our order as they have gathered here in response to the call of love and duty to honor our nation's preservers. To thy name we ascribe all praise, honor, and glory, both now and forever. Amen. That concludes our service. Thank you everyone for coming. And this is the new stone that we were able to get for Mr. Swan. <laughs>